you're rolling. Hi, we're here at the home of John Elliott, star of Super Bowl III. I've been asked to do this interview this afternoon because I know so much about football. Hi, welcome to our Super Bowl extravaganza. I'm here at the home of Super Bowl star John Elliott, star of Super Bowl number three. I've been asked to do this interview with John because I know so much about football. I'm wearing John's jersey, number 80, and the helmet he wore in the All-Star game. I can hardly wait. John, the jersey probably looked better on you than it did on me. Tell us about uh, Super Bowl number three. Who were some of the folks that you played ball with? Well, of course, everybody knows Namath. Uh, on that team, we had lots of Texans. We had, out of 37 guys active for the Super Bowl, we had 11 from the state of Texas. We had Carl Mike Adams from White Deer, Texas, Weston Hill went to Texas Southern, um, Jim Hudson, George Sire, and Pete Lamons all went to UT with myself. Um, Bake Turner went to Tech. Don Maynard went to Texas Western. Yes. Did any of them wear pantyhose? <laughs> Not too often. <laughs> no, I don't think that. All this happened before Joe started wearing pantyhose. Oh. After that, we never won many games. <laughs> Jeff, what, what was the score of the game? 16 to 7. And you haven't forgotten the score of that particular game? No, it would be hard for me to forget. No. A lot of things I do forget, but not that. What position did you play at the time? Defensive tackle. Okay, and you played defensive tackle in the All-Star game as well? Yeah. yeah. What, what was special about Super Bowl III? What separated it from all other Super Bowls? Well, it was the first and last time I was in, and really what separated from all the Super Bowls since then is the uh, how much Baltimore was favored, uh, predicted to win a game by 20 to 30 points. Uh, some people were saying we wouldn't even score against them, and some people were saying that uh, it shouldn't even be a game, they shouldn't even play the game because we weren't that good. And it was the first time the AFL had won, again, uh, won the Super Bowl against the NFL. What's a good question I need to ask, John? What is the highlight of the game that's going to stand out in your mind? Well, really, back then the game wasn't hyped up like it is today. And the thing I remember really, really wasn't so much the game as after the game. We get back to the hotel after the game and there's no celebration, no anything planned. I, I guess the owners didn't even think we would win because we didn't have to have an after-game celebration. and. We just went back to our motel or hotel we were staying at, and see, I guess I was home in bed two hours after the game was over. Now they just have all kinds of celebrations for them. How many people were in the stadium? I think at that time we played in the Orange Bowl in Miami, and it held 76 or 77,000. It was plumb full. Just a second, some brilliant questions to ask <laughs> Who were afraid to ask? Why don't you cart some of the stuff over here and I'll hand it to him a, a bit at a time. Two of them. <laughs> John, describe for me some of these bits and pieces of memorabilia from Super Bowl III. What have you got there? This is a, the shoes, that I, or the type of shoe I wore in that game. As you can see, it's got the regular old football cleats, not like the shoes they play with nowadays. And uh, these are the shoes I wore in the game, and I've saved them. As I was looking at the shoes there, I noticed on your hand you have a Super Bowl ring. How uh, goodness that thing is <laughs> big. I'm going to hold that up to the camera lens there. What does it say on it? Well, here's the top. It's got uh, where's the glasses? <laughs> New York Jets World Champions. And on the side over here it has a score of the Super Bowl. Jet 16, Colts 7, and the score of the AFL 
championship game, which is the Jets 27, the Raiders 23. And on this side over here, it has my name and a picture of our helmet and my uniform number. Describe that for me, another little piece. That was what it was all about. <laughs> <laughs> this is your Super Bowl paycheck? These two things here, the paycheck and the ring. <laughs> of course, this is long gone, but I've still got the ring. And uh, the paycheck, that's about what they get today, isn't it? Uh, for about a quarter of the game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For the first quarter, they get that. Great. We've got several other pieces here. I'm going to uh, zoom in on let you describe. And we'll cut and come back. I'm about to. He's dirty and muddy and he's working. Let's see if I put this there. Aerial shot. See, the ball goes this way. I see. I see. Okay. John's one in the air. Nice. See, that's. That's the way football used to be, where you get dirty when you played. There's one of the equipment managers who worked at the game. That football doesn't look right. He's got a hat. A hat on. Hat on. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> How about your new one? You and picture behind Yeah, you. I wanted to shoot that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to get in and that trophy? These two are not members of the team, right? Well, we, of course, Nameless not in there. They had that taken on their day off. He didn't show. Two or three <laughs> other guys didn't show. Is it? Strikes about eight or ten times. <laughs>
What? Yeah, we well, need John, we had the opportunity to see Tom Landry and some football stars of. Uh, uh, I'll start that again. Of uh, what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Yeah. We've had a lot of football players in recent days who have uh, been very public with their testimony and their Christian faith, and Tom Landry has the video that we're using today for the Super Bowl. Was that as common when you were playing ball? Were there Christians on your team with you, or, or was anybody public with their faith? Yeah, quite a few of them were. I know before each home game we had a, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't call it a Bible study or a chapel. Yeah, we called it chapel. We had it uh, about a 30 minute deal. We had different speakers in each week before each home game. And then we always said a prayer before the game and a prayer afterwards. Uh, we had one of the guys I played with, I believe he was a rookie on the Super Bowl team, is, is in the ministry now. But there were quite a few Christians, and uh, Paul Crane, one of our linebackers, real active in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. But we had quite a few Christians on the team. And you were a Christian when you were playing ball? No, I came to know the Lord in 76. How'd that come to pass? Um, well, I was raised in a Christian home, and you know, I just just kept putting it off, putting it off, and then it just all of a sudden it just I felt like I couldn't put it off any longer. And uh, it was when I was living up in the hill country, and I knew I had to do something in my life, and I just turned it over to the Lord to take over for me. Was the the fact that you played with some guys on the football team who were Christians, did that impact your decision, or, or was that uh, any part of the puzzle? Well, it was part of the puzzle. Um, I could see by the life they led what, what the Lord had done for them. And I know we had one guy on the team, our middle linebacker, Al Atkinson. Uh, he was a real, real good Christian. And, you know, there was a lot of them on there, but really... I don't think we talked about it that much at the time, but you know, always in my heart, I knew I was, you know, that I would be a Christian one day. But I just wished I'd have done it sooner. But uh, you know, it's just the way things happen. You feel like there's benefit to the the linkage that we see so often now between the athlete and his profession of his faith in a public way. Do you think there's any value in that? Oh, I think there's a lot of value in it. I think there's a lot of value in anybody professing their faith to anyone else, but especially, you know, the big word nowadays is role model. If the role model is a good role model, then uh, he's going to lead a lot, a lot more people to, to becoming a Christian. So I don't have to wear a jersey that big or wear the helmet to be able to be a testimony for Christ? No, no. You, you can wear your coat and tie like you got on now. <laughs> Thank you, John. We appreciate your time. Okay.